Hey guys, welcome to Charcoal King. Today on the menu, a shrimp and corn chowder that's going to blow your mind. Alright guys, so in previous videos, I've always mentioned I've got like this uh, list of great recipes or I've got like a family tradition or something like that. Let me show you. So my wife years back came up with this idea that I create these recipes basically from just whatever's in the refrigerator. And sometimes they're incredible and sometimes they are really incredible. You thought we'd go down, no, we go up here. But uh, it's basically just build your knowledge. So she made this really cool uh, book for me. And inside here is my book of secrets. So we're not gonna open this up for you guys to see. But today's shrimp and corn chowder is one of the fan faves right here. So we're gonna get to it. We have a lot of ingredients to prep. So I'm gonna prep those without boring you guys. But I did wanna show you this. We've got two pounds of large shrimp, shell on. I always want the shell on. All I did was defrost them in the refrigerator and I did not strain the juice. Why? Because all that juice is considered liquor and that liquor is flavor. And in the Charcoal King, all we do is flavor. In the pot of water, I've got four cups of water just coming to basically to a slow boil. While this is coming to a boil, I'm going to peel all of my shrimp. With all of my shrimp peelings, we're going to put them in the pot and excrete. Is that a good word? Excrete? Excrete. Yeah, that word too. As much flavor as possible. Almost like a mini shrimp stock. Let's get to prepping. Let's get to peeling. And we're going to get back to you in, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. But for you guys, it's going to be about now. All right, guys. So we got done uh, shelling the shrimp. And this is the bag that it came in. So this is what I was trying to hit on earlier. If you buy fresh shrimp, obviously, you're not going to have the liquor or the juice that comes out of it. But being stuck in the mountains of East Tennessee, it's not like we're close to a local uh, shellfish uh, store or anything like that. So a lot of times, a lot of our seafood comes frozen. But... When you thaw this out, just be careful in the refrigerator or anywhere because there are typically holes in the bag. And what happens is you get a lot of liquid. Now, this liquid is gold. This is like pure, great shrimp flavor. You cannot replicate that flavor. So, all right. First things first. Let's go and take our shrimp liquor. Ooh. Just put all that in there. Same thing with the shells. We're basically looking for a quick blanch, a quick boil, anything to get as much flavor out of here as possible. Put the lid on. And then while that's cooking, we're gonna finish prepping the rest of our vegetables. I've got all the vegetables prepped. You can see we got, a, we got the medium onion, we got a bell pepper, we got two carrots, and we got two potatoes. Couple words of wisdom. When you're making a soup, chowder, or anything like that, imagine what the person next to you is gonna eat out of the bowl. The point is, is when somebody takes a spoon and put it in a bowl of soup, imagine how big chunks can be in a spoon and how many ingredients can fall out of it while they're trying to eat it. So while you're chopping, just remember, try to keep it small but uniform, okay? Just, I don't know. What do you think size that is? <laughs> I don't know. Honey. Good. That, that's exactly what I was trying to go for. All right, we've got our corn shucked. And I did forget this, but I'm going to go and show you guys now. When we're talking about the shrimp stock, I went ahead and cut the corn first off the cob, okay? Right now we have great, great, great sweet corn. You can use frozen and you can use canned. What I did was I put the corn husks, or the not the husks, the uh, cobs actually in the, in the water with the shrimp. And this is almost the exact same thing that we're doing with the shrimp shells. We are trying to What's that word? Excrete? Mm hmm The max amount of flavor with ingredients we got. So this is how we do it. All right. Next step. This bad boy is going to be hot. I am going to strain it. I'll tell you what. I'm going to do this off camera. I'm going to take this. I'm going to strain it. We're going to come back and we're going to start this uh, shrimp and corn chowder. Okay. Why are we straining it? Because we got to get the shells out. Yes. And we're going to be left oh. with that. Oh, oh, oh. Tip. Hang on. Tip, 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 tip. We added four cups of water, okay? 
when we're doing the shrimp and the corn um, thingamajigger, leave the lid on. Just be careful that your shrimp doesn't overboil, but you don't want your stock reducing. That's not what the point is. We're not reducing it right now. We're just trying to extract. Extract. There you there go. There we go. <laughs> extract the max amount of flavor. So we're not reducing the stock to make it like uh, concentrated. We're just trying to get as much flavor out of the ingredients that we have. So don't put your, don't take your lid off. All right. Let me strain this because I don't want a facial of steam and make a big mess and spill it and try to film it at the same time. We'll be right back. All right, we got our stock strained. We got our pot back on the stove. We got it about a medium low heat. And now we're gonna impart basically all these flavors together. First things first, three tablespoons of butter. And if you're a follow the charcoal king, you know you like bacon. And if you like bacon, you cook bacon. If you cook bacon, you save bacon grease. And if you save bacon grease, when it comes to shrimp and corn chowder, you can use bacon grease as a fat because fat is flavor. Mm. Hope you guys got all that. I don't know, maybe about a I tablespoon. I think they heard it loud and clear. You you're, think so? You're yelling. A big tablespoon. Good flavor. I want them to understand the importance of bacon fat. So this is a healthy soup. Oh yeah, it's cream. Cream and it's got shrimp. In it. It's got shrimp. <laughs> Protein. All right. Here we go. Now we're not looking for color in our vegetables. So we're we're not looking for like a, a saute or anything like that. We're looking more like a, a sweat. Oh, I'm falling. Oh jeez. You got your <laughs> necklace on. My oh <laughs> I've fallen. I can't get up. All right. Basically what we're doing is just adding the vegetables and I would probably just say warm them through before we even add the stock. All right, next, after all the vegetables are added, we're gonna add that beautiful sweet corn. Mm. Now, if you guys have seen this video that I just recently made about the uh, Cast iron skillet chicken potatoes. You saw my garlic, how black it was. I went to the same grocery store today that the microwave queen went to and the garlic looked horrendous. So I did not use fresh garlic. We do have already minced garlic. So we're just gonna add that bad boy. Two tablespoons of garlic. And some salt and pepper. Now remember, this is a big bowl. And I don't know about you, but I love fresh cracked pepper and some chowder. Some chowder. Some chowder. <laughs> My ratio, she already said, golly, are all those vegetables going to fit? And I said, hey, this is, this is what kind of chowder I'm talking about. We haven't even added all the ingredients yet. Like I said, my soup does not come thin, I can tell you that. Salt. All right. Like I said, we're not trying to put a brown on it. We're just gonna bring it up to temperature between that fat and the bacon. All right, guys, so we're still adding ingredients. All right, I got a can of green chilies. I went for the hot type just because there's so much soup. I don't necessarily think it's gonna be uh, too hot. Too hot. Plus, like the kids, plus the kids don't eat this. No. This, that's way too much vegetables for them. Just the word vegetables. All right. You can add chicken stock at this point. I thought I had some. I've always got some of this stuff left on hand. You guys just do what you want. If you, That's why I did the four cups of water. But uh, I'm just going to do one tablespoon of chicken stock, bouillon, whatever it's called. The whole point is you're just adding flavor. Now with all of our vegetables warmed up. God almighty. Mmm, smells good. Alright. Here's a picture of our stock. Now, like I said, this is not condensed down, but you can tell definitely the difference between water and this. So it has some type of flavor. 
Perfect. You want just enough liquid. It's almost like I've done this before. You want just enough liquid to cover the vegetables. Okay. And the whole point now is just to cook your vegetables all the way through. We're not worried about anything else. Just cook your vegetables all the way through. After that, we're going to add some cream. We're going to add our cheese. We're going to add our two pounds of shrimp because like I told you, my soup gets thick. And then after that, the bite. All right guys, so our soup is uh, coming up to temperature. We're allowing our vegetables to cook through and so our shrimp. I just want to reiterate what I said earlier about the pieces of vegetables that went in the soup. Same thing with the shrimp. You can imagine what a spoon would look like with a whole piece of shrimp. So what I do, I basically cut them in thirds. Okay, just like that. All right guys, it's about that time. I think my, veg my vegetables are tender. Show you guys what it looks like. If you could just smell what's going on. Oh, it smells so good. The gr I, th I think the green chilies are really made. The green chilies and corn, I think is what I get. The good thing about videoing is the fact that I put this on pause and went to go pick up my kids from the, from the uh, bus stop and came back and it was done. That's the power of video right there. <laughs> so, all right, like anything else, you want to taste it. So being extremely hot, bear with me. It needs everything. I need a little <laughs> more pepper. Well, it's hard to gauge when you start off. Remember, you can always add, but you cannot. Take away. Correct. Fresh cracked pepper. The heat is there. I love the heat and I love the green chilies. We're really close. A little more salt. And also too, when you add your bouillon or your chicken stock or your butter, obviously you can get unsalted butter or salted butter. You can get stock with 33% per less, percent less sodium, whatever the case may be. So just make sure you taste it right now, okay? All right, next step, equal parts fat and flour. You can also use cornstarch and water. The difference is if you just add your flour straight to your liquid, it's going to clump up and it's not going to have that um, emulsification that it needs to be able to thicken. Emulsification? It's culinary terms, I'm telling you. I'm you were pulling out the big words, babe. One, two. Now I'm just eyeballing this, but I'm going to guess about three tablespoons. And the point is, watch what happens. See, it's already lumpy. And the more you mix it, the fat just helps dissolve the flour okay see that see that lump that's what would happen in your soup if you just put it in there so all you're going to do is just stir it all out the two ingredients that we're going to have next right when it's about to be done is the cream and cheese and that's going to help thicken up as well so don't panic about your chowder being runny at this point add it and stir it so Tight that got up in a hurry. We're not making a gravy out of it by any means. The difference is all I want to do is just tighten it up just a hair. You guys can see how runny it still is. Your flour, your roux, your slurry is never going to come to its strongest power, its strongest thickening power until you bring it up to a boil. So that's what you want to make sure at this point, you want to bring it up to a boil, keep it going. And that's what we have now. Okay. All right. Next step. We're going to add the healthy stuff. <laughs> Heavy cream. Three cups of heavy cream? We're going to try three cups. A lot of soup. <laughs> this is healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Bacon fat, butter, heavy cream, cheese. Body by soup. <laughs> Mm, good Lord of mercy. Looking good. All right. We're going to give this about five minutes. Now, what's going to happen, just like anything else, you don't want to boil the crap out of your cream. That's why everything needs to be very close to seasoned and everything needs to be very close to tenderness at this point. Before you add the cream. Before you add the cream. If you boil the cream too much, it's going to break down. Okay, so all we're going to do Obviously, you're adding cold to hot. We're going to bring it back up to temperature, 
Make sure it's on like very, just a low simmer. You don't want to overdo it. All right, guys, we're just right at that point to where it's starting to simmer. If you leave it long enough, it's coming up to like a very, very slow boil. And that's exactly what we want. You see that? Zoom in on that one right there. Because you don't want to over miss it. You don't want to look. See how it's just starting to come up just a little bit. The vegetables are starting to rotate inside of it. That's plenty of heat to take it over the edge right now, okay? Give it a couple stirs, let it rest. It's gonna do it a couple more times. Let's see if it bubbles. It's bubbling and bubbling, we're good. All right, here we go. All right, cheese. I know what you're thinking. Why put cheese in chowder? Because it's so good. God. I just think it adds, you don't really taste the cheese, but I think it adds just a little bit of velvet, velvet, velvet. 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 Velvety. Velvetly. <laughs> Velvetly. <laughs> this might be one of those words. Velvetly. Velvety. 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 Velveta. Velvety. No. Yeah, that one too. You're never going to taste it, but it just adds a little bit of color. And it also just adds a little bit. It's going to help thicken it. And it's going to add just a little bit of body to it. Okay. All right. So we're looking for the cheese to melt then. The cheese is melted, probably melted instantly. Oh, okay. All right, so obviously we added cold to warm. As soon as it comes up to the first boil, the shrimp. All right, now that we've tasted it, and I feel confident we're wherever we need to be, we've got a couple bubbles, just very slightly, coming up. Turn your heat off. Trust that you spent all that money on a cast iron pan and the residual heat is gonna cook your shrimp all the way through. Just like that. I'm gonna put the lid on it to keep the heat inside of it. And that is one step away from being here to here. All right, guys, moment of truth. Everything's calmed down, the shrimp's cooked, moist. All right, here's a tip, tip of the week. <clears throat> if you don't have a serving spoon or a big enough spoon or a ladle or a soup spoon, you know my pet peeves. Use something more than once. This bad boy has been our soup, beef stew, whatever kind of mm. serving dish you can imagine. Look at that, look at that creaminess. Mm, that looks good, babe. All the vegetables are still there. It's not overcooked. The shrimp is bright pink. Mm. I use this bad boy to serve everything. Ice cream too. That's a one scoop. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you guys know I know what it tastes like. I'm trying to hold back my excitement here. This Let's taste a, it professionally. Okay? This is a favorite. I blackened some shrimp. That has nothing to do with it, but I love blackened shrimp. I kept a couple out just to... Just for me. For garnish, mm. to make it look pretty. Yeah. It's good soup. It's good soup. Mmm. Let's see. Let's see a spoonful. This is what I'm talking about, how the vegetables need to match the spoon size. Who are we kidding? Let's be honest with you. What do we do with it? You're looking for your giant spoon? There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big spoon, honey. That's my type of bite right there. <laughs> hey, let's finish this video. I do have a question. You guys know all about it. Press the notification button. Press the subscribe button and share it with your friends. But I got a question. Comment below. It's getting colder outside. <clears throat> We're getting in the dessert phase. We've been battling back and forth. Here's our two options. Take a cast iron skillet, add some cherries, take some brownie mix, grate some butter in it, toss the brownie mix with the butter, add some chocolate chips, put it over the cherries and bake it like a... Like a um, chocolate cherry cobbler. Chocolate cherry cobbler. Or we go to the flat top. Peaches are out of season, but when peaches are in season, I really want to do it, but we haven't got into it yet. Take some peaches, put them on the flat top, add a little brown sugar, maybe a little whiskey, flambe it, have maybe some angel food cake or maybe some uh, pound cake, 
butter it, grill it, maybe a little cinnamon, brown sugar toast. Take all those peaches later on top, maybe, maybe a little bit of a homemade uh, whipped cream on top. So comment below, tell me guys what you guys wanna see us make for dessert. Cause the desserts are coming, it's one of our favorites. Thanks for watching, peace.